Hello. Hello, hello. We are going live. We'll give just a second. Uh, say hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hi, hello. Chris and hi, Kelly. <laughs> All right, let's get started. I am Kelly, and I am the developer relations lead running at, at Cube Shop, uh, which is an open source incubator accelerator for Kubernetes and uh, cloud native developer tools. And today we are talking about Kusk, uh, which uses open API for Kubernetes, and more particularly Kusk Gateway, which is an open API driven gateway for Kubernetes. Uh, so we have Christopher here, who is a product manager for Kusk. Uh, woo, there's a fanfare in the back, <laughs> just us, <laughs> who is located in Houston, yeah? Right? Did I get yes, that right? Houston, Texas. All right. And now we have Abdullah, who is a developer evangelist and advocate in all things Kusk related, um, who is currently in Southern Spain. Yes, I am. Uh, sunny South Southern Spain. Sweet. So um, we'll kick it off. Christopher will go through what Kusk actually is, how it kind of fits into the API ops lifecycle. Um, we'll talk about their latest Kusk Gateway release. Um, and then Abdallah will do a demo and kind of a walkthrough of all the new features. Um, we'll talk around kind of what's coming up next in the roadmap and um, anything else that comes up. So if you're watching live or if you're watching a replay, feel free to put comments in the chat if you're on LinkedIn or YouTube or even Twitter. And we'll either discuss them um, as we go along or kind of at the end of the, the live stream or um, answer your questions either on Discord or through YouTube. So we'll also, here's a link to our Discord at the bottom here. Um, feel free to join there to the Kusk and the Kusk Gateway channels um, if you have any questions or feedback or anything as well. All right, that was long. Christopher, go ahead, take it away. Uh, thank you, Kelly. So um, what is Kusk Gateway? Um, an open API driven gateway for API first development uh, teams using Kubernetes. That's a mouthful, but at the heart of it, wouldn't it be great if uh, open API could be used um, as the truth, as the true source of truth uh, for operating and managing um, access to APIs running in Kubernetes? Uh, using uh, open API uh, to automatically configure those ingress routes, uh, not only allow teams to control operation specifics of their APIs with a familiar tool, um, but it also lays the groundwork for enabling rapid and iterative uh, development process. Uh, without learning how to implement these features uh, independently, a team can implement common API operations uh, requirements through uh, extensions in the open API spec that they're already using. Um, because of this, uh, we've put uh, open API at the center of the API uh, lifecycle. And while Cusk can be a solution for several of these areas, um, including uh, mainly mocking and deployments at this time, um, having a design first approach using open api at the center of that as your source of truth in a declarative way uh, enables teams to take advantage of an entire ecosystem of solutions so we've uh, recently released uh cusk gateway uh, 1.1 and we're going to go through uh, a few enhancements that have come out with that release um, there's some big items here, so I'm going to give a quick overview of it, and then Abdallah is going to show us how those work. Um, so first off, we have a header-based authentication. So this is the first of the authentication uh, features coming to Cus Gateway. We've started here. There's more to come, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but with header-based authentication, it opens up a lot of uh, a possibility. You can do basic authentication. You can do API keys, uh, header or sorry, bear tokens, anything that can be put into the header and validated against values in those headers can be implemented through this header-based authentication. On top of that, we put uh, some other uh, operation needs uh, within Cus Gateway um, that are common to API gateways um, and, and used across the board. We have uh, rate limiting, so you can easily apply uh, rate limiting to your APIs, and we have caching. Um, 
So these will allow you to, uh, to configure those, and Abdullah is going to show us more about how that works. Um, then we have a way to expose the public uh, Open API endpoint. So the uh, Open API spec minus all of the Cusk specific extensions um, that are used for operations, uh, you can send that back out. And that's more about being, again, a part of that uh, that ecosystem and allowing you to use this for you know other needs, whether it be document generation, code generation, developer portals, you name it. You can point to that publicly available Open API spec. On top of that, we made some uh, improvements to the way that we're doing mocking in the background. We're not going to see a demo of that because it's really kind of a background enhancement, but making it more efficient, more performant. Um, and then uh, also we did some things around upgradability and how you know if you're an existing Cus user, um, you can uh, quickly upgrade uh, your deployment in your cluster. So with that. I'm going to turn it over to Abdallah to see the interesting part um, and actually see these uh, features in action. Yeah, sweet. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Chris. So, Kelly, if you don't mind sharing my screen. I'll hide us thanks. here to hopefully that's big enough for everybody. Great. So yeah, um, I have here a cluster running on JKE. Um, I just created this cluster right now and, and ran the commands Cusk install. So you can see here that uh, this is the only command that you need to make Cusk work in your in your system, and it installs uh, Cusk Gateway and the dashboard and some APIs that, that are needed to, to execute it. On the left side, you'll see that I have a, an open API example with some commented sections. Uh, these are going to be the stuff that we're going to be uh, discussing about today. But as you can see, this is a normal open API file. Actually, uh, if you have any Open API parser, uh, like the one that I have here in VS Code, you'll see that it can just parse it and, and you'll have uh, directly the, the documentation over there. Um, so the cool thing about this Open API file is that the way you can you configure Kusk is uh, through adding this xcusk extension over here. This basically means that um, the x dash uh, is a way of annotating or extending the Open API definition. Um, and that's where we're going to put all the uh, CUSC related uh, configurations for the API. And so you'll see here that I can add cores, uh, like with their origins and the allowed methods. I can enable mocking, which I'm going to talk about right now. And the entire thing lies in the same place as your um, as the rest of your API uh, API is defined. So, for example, uh, to be able to apply this. Uh, open API into the repository, uh, into my cluster, I'll just need to run this command, um, which I'm going to explain to you in a bit. So basically, this will generate um, a, a file that you'll see. Uh, we are going to connect it to the Envoy fleet. Envoy is what we use underneath in Kusk um, to, to deploy the gateway. So we just configure uh, Envoy for you. And this is the default Envoy gateway. So I just uh, I'm going to give it that one. And then I'll just pass this file open API, which is the one that I, that I have described here. If I run this command, you'll see that it just generates a Kubernetes manifest. It's a Kusk specific Kubernetes manifest with the open API just pasted in into the document. And so what I'm going to do is just pipe this command into the kube control um, apply. And that way, I already have my um, API deployed into the cluster. So I'm going to clear the terminal. So uh, now, in order to, to test the API, I'll just need to get the external IP of it. Uh, and that I'll, I'm going to do through going to the listing the uh, Kubernetes system, CUS system, and I'll get the external IP from here. We'll see that this is the Envoy fleet that we used before. So I'll just copy this one. I'll clear the screen. And then I'll make a simple HTTP request. We have here the hello path, um, which I'm going to ask over here. And now what you'll see is that we have a message, hello from Markusk. And I didn't program or didn't deploy any service at all at my uh, in my cluster. Where this is coming from is through the example field over here. Given that we enabled mocking in Kusk, uh, Kusk, because it's a gateway that is aware of the open API file, it can just go into the example field and return this um, uh, response to the to the to the user. So imagine, for example, if you had a front end and a back end team, um, they could come here uh, into the open API file. They can design the API, 
and they can deploy it, then you you would enable the mocking and the front end team would be instantly able to start working with um, with the API and the backend team still haven't uh, wrote a single line of code. And so they can basically work in parallel while these things are, are working. I'm gonna make another request to the validated section over here. Um, it's a path uh, and it's a post request. So I'm just gonna do the same uh, post. I'm gonna take the same IP address and put it here. And then I'm gonna call the validated section. And you'll see that it's uh, it's also taking the hello mark disk, which is uh, the response, the example that we have added here. So now once the backend team have uh, written their the code and the service is ready to be deployed, the way that we're, that we're going to deploy it is first of all deploying the uh, the service. And so you'll see here that I have a simple Hello World application uh, and a service that's called Hello World service and it's deployed in the 8084. So what I'm going to do is just uh, apply these command uh, this um, uh, manifest Kubernetes and then Hello World app. Now it's deployed. And uh, the way you would configure Kusk to be to make it aware of the service is just coming into the Open API file again, commenting out the mocking and uh, uh, connecting the upstream over here. So this basically means that the upstream for the entire API is going to be the Hello World service that we just deployed in the default namespace and in this port. Uh, so I'll just run the, the command again. Um, like the same command that I ran before, uh, I'll just write it once again. You'll see that it's configured. And if we make some tests into the Hello path, for example, you'll actually see that we're serving uh, an implemented service. It's not a mock service. Uh, this is just a small application that I have over here that basically returns a hello from an implemented server. Um, so that's cool. We've, uh, we've created an application, we've mocked it. Uh, and then once the backend team wrote the, the service, they de they've deployed it, we've connected it through here. What other stuff can you actually do? Let's, let's actually test uh, the other validated section like this one over here. So I'll make the post request again. Uh, and, and now you'll see that there is an internal server error. And this basically was made because if you go here into the app again, you'll see that we're trying to access a name field and we haven't validated that name field uh, and we haven't sent it in the, in, the, in the request. So basically my application failed because I wasn't able to validate. But one of the powers of, of Cusk again, um, because of the fact that it's aware of the open API file is that it can actually check the request body that you have over here. And it'll see that it needs a name uh, and that name is a string and it'll be able to validate it for you. And one of the things that you'll see is that I've defined this rule on a path level and a, not a global level. That's because all the rules that uh, uh, Kusk allows can be defined on a global level. So these apply to the entire uh, set of paths and, and operations, or you can define them on a, on a path level or even on a operation level. So what, I'm, what I just de did here is basically enabling the validation. Um, and I'm going to run through it uh, again, update my API through the same command as always. And if I try to run the validated request again without sending the name, uh, it'll just give me uh, a nice error message that, hey, a value is required, but it's missing. And if I added the name, um, or let's say Kusk viewers over here, uh, you'll see that it sends the message hello to viewers. So basically, I just validated every request that goes into my um, Kubernetes cluster without needing to write a single line of code. We just enabled it in the open API definition again, and that allowed us uh, to make uh, all these kind of stuff. So again, one of the stuff that we have that uh, Chris has uh, talked about today is the possibility of uh, being able to um, deploy a section of your API, which will contain the information, like this same open API file, but with trimmed uh, details, like all the secret details are not revealed and, and you'll be able to share this file with everyone. So again, I'm just gonna paste this over here. Um, and if I go to the same um, request and I just go to this path, uh, open API JSON, you'll see that there is this uh, JSON file that describes my, my open API. And then you could share this with uh, any documentation tools, Swagger UI, you name it. Um, another thing that I actually like a lot is the fact that you're, you're able to rate limit without having to, to have a PhD. Like you just 
uh, put the rate limiting, you say how many requests you want and the, the units of time that you're going to use. Um, you apply that into your cluster and instantly you'll be able to see that if I go, for example, to the hello path, uh, given that I rate limited two requests per, per minute, if I take it once, it says hello from an implemented server, uh, twice, and the third time it's gonna rate limit the, the request. So that's like rate limiting uh, made extremely simple. Uh, and again, you don't need to be an ops person or, or write or learn annotations of the YAML file uh, in order to deploy this. Uh, next, I'll just show the, the caching. Again, this is a, a quick way of, of demoing this. Let me just re, uh, remove the rate limiting so the caching can, can actually work. Um, and I'll do the same request. I'll do a hello request. Uh, and you can see here that the cache control has been hit. So the next request that I, that I make is going to come from the, from the cache service. Finally, one of the most important releases that we've been doing now, and we hope to, to improve in the, in the future uh, with adding more functionalities, is the auth uh, service. So let me comment here out the cache and enable the auth. Basically, the auth um, um, form that you can actually use with Kus at the moment is through a basic auth, and you just connect it to an upstream. As you'll see here, I have an application, an extremely simple application uh, that takes the authorization header checks uh, if it exists. If it's not existing, it'll return a 401. If it does exist, it'll just check if the user uh, is cask and the password is gateway, uh, and it'll return an authorized section. This is a very simple Dino application. Um, and then I have here the uh, open API file that describes the entire um, application and just deploys it. It's basic auth. And the service is going to be basic auth and deployed in the default namespace. So I'm just going to come here, uh, queue control, apply uh, Kubernetes and the basic auth. And uh, I'll go to my open API file. And you'll see here that I connected the basic auth service to it uh, with the port 8080. So if I update my Kusk uh, API, I'll just run the same command again. And I'll clear, clear my screen. If I make the HTTP request, um, you'll see that it actually says missing auth authorization header, which is returned by my authorization uh, authentication sorry um, service. So uh, let's just give it the header. Uh, it's going to be CRISC uh, for user and gateway as password. And that's it. Uh, now the request is directed to the actual upstream uh, of, the, of the service. Um, so this has been it. I, I like to um, reinforce the idea that everything was from a single source of truth. Uh, you didn't have to manage different type of YAML files configuration in order to make this happen. Um, it's defined in one place. And as you can see, it's extremely simple to create your rate limits. It's extremely simple to cache your APIs. You can do it on a global level, on a path level. And uh, with the support of basic auth, we hope that a lot of users are interested in, in coming to show it. We also have a CRISC dashboard command, which basically opens uh, a dashboard for you, and you can manage uh, all the same things that you've seen, but from a dashboard. Um, and you'll see here that you can publish a new API and, and describe the open API spec for it, and so on. So thank you. Back to you, um, Chris. Excellent. Thank you, Abdallah. And one thing to note is uh, you may have picked it up through the demo there, but we didn't say it explicitly. Um, all of the things that you saw there could be done globally across the entire API. They could also be done on the path level and at the operation level. So it gives you a lot of flexibility there. Um, but thank you for that demo. And so what we'll do is uh, we'll take a look at... Um, you know, while we're excited about the features that we've just released, uh, the team is already busy working on, you know, what's coming up next. So uh, we can preview that a little bit um, and kind of talk through those things. And um, so as, as you mentioned, we got uh, basic authentication out and header-based authentication um, going forward. Uh, we're continuing work in that area and supporting OAuth, which is a uh, commonly requested uh, feature for uh, CUS Gateway. So we'll be adding that. And then there'll be some other enhancements to the authentication support there as well. Uh, we're also working on in the area of mocking because that's been very valuable to uh, the workflow 
and that rapid prototyping uh, workflow. And so uh, where we have some really uh, great things coming out here where you can mock directly from the CLI. So you can do some local development and kind of do some rapid uh, prototyping right on your own machine, not just in the cluster. Um, then we're also looking at doing uh, auto mocking from schema. So while we had to provide examples uh, currently for, um, for each response. Um, if you did not have those examples or uh, you weren't able to generate those yet for uh, your specific uh, endpoints, um, you could actually derive that from the schema that you've given uh, for the endpoint. So um, that's really great. And then speaking of that schema, um, when you're mocking, um, right now, if you have mocking, you cannot use that with uh, validation. And so we're looking at ways to allow both mocking and validation at the same time so that you can have your mock environment respond the same way that you'd want to do uh, in your production environment with full validation. Um, on top of that, uh, we're looking at some developer experience enhancements, just making all of our lives easier while we're using uh, Cusk, uh, looking at improved dashboards, some CLI optimizations. I don't want to go too far into that, but we've got some really exciting things coming out. Um, and there'll be more as the team works. We're learning every day. We're taking in feedback um, from the community. And so that's the, the most important point here is while we, you see some things that we're looking at doing, um, if there's something that uh, you're excited about using Cusp, but there's this thing that you just really have to have or um, there's something that's, that's missing there, um, you can reach out to us and, um, you know, we're reevaluating what we're doing on a daily basis and um, and, and taking that in. So um, please reach out to us. Uh, I know Kelly's going to give us some ways to to reach out to the team. And um, that is very important. We'd love to hear from you. Awesome. We actually have a couple of questions that came in. So um, are we all finished with this part, Christopher? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So first question. How does Cusk fit into GitOps and automated workflows? I can take that one, Chris. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, the fact that OpenAPI is the source of truth of everything in your in your uh, gateway uh, makes it actually pretty interesting because you can just put that OpenAPI file on GitHub. Uh, you can connect Argo City to it, uh, and Argo City has a nice, pretty neat feature where you could add plugins, and you would add the Cusk plugin. So basically, you would have a flow where developers uh, can test everything locally, but once they push the open API file to GitHub, Argo City would pick it, which is the GitOps approach, and then uh, it'll, it'll automate the deployment of the API for you. And so the cool thing about this is that you really don't need any ops uh, to do this. Like you can configure the entire gateway by yourself, and then you can deploy it into, the, uh, into GitHub, connected to GitOps uh, tools, Flux is out there as well, and, and have the entire thing automated for you. Super cool. Uh, and then we have another one too. Let's see if this works. It's from YouTube. So what are the existing authentication that you suppose to now apart from OAuth? Excellent. Um, I can take that one. Um, so um, right now we support anything that is a header-based uh, authentication. And so what that means is we can support basic auth, which was demoed uh, here today, um, but that's only one of many, many ways you could use that. Um, you can do uh, API keys, you can, um, you can support uh, app IDs, you can do a combination of API keys and app IDs. Um, you can do bear tokens, so that would include things like uh, JWTs, and, and, and there's, there's a lot of possibility there. So anything that you can transmit through headers and then validate based on that header content and return a response um, to the upstream application uh, can be supported now. So that's a few examples, but um, there's a lot of possibility with the header-based authentication. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, the, the one that that doesn't solve, which is coming up, is, is OAuth-based authentication, and that has been a big request. But there's mm -hmm. a lot of variety that's available now. And if that doesn't answer your question, just uh, reach out to us and we can look at the specifics of uh, an implementation you're looking at. Totally. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Not supposed support. I read it. I was reading the screen before actually <laughs> realizing what I was saying, but <laughs> too much. Uh, all right, let's finish up here. How do I get back to where we are? There we go. Too many buttons. Uh, so kind of like Christopher said, if you have any questions for the team, uh, want to check things out, all of that, um, you can go to 
kuska.io. And then here is a link to our Discord um, for Kuska, Kuska Gateway, uh, all of the team, the devs, Abdullah, Christopher, are on that. Um, so feel free to reach out there. We'll have 1.2 is coming soon <laughs> enough and we'll we'll do um, another live stream to kind of show that off once uh, we have it out too. So thanks everybody. Awesome. Excellent. Have Thank a good one. So all right, see y'all. Ciao. Bye.